Get your questions ready for this week's one hour call and show all about non-game wildlife in Kentucky. That's the critters that creep and crawl and you don't necessarily hunt. The number to call, 1-800-944-4664. Tastes like victory. Hello and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm Tim Farmer. Tonight we have a special one hour call in show all about non game wildlife in Kentucky. Number to call 1 800 944 4664. Also, going to take some questions on Facebook, Kentucky Field Facebook page. It's just Kentucky Field. Like it, or we won't bring you an Easter basket next year. 1 800 944 4664. We're going to introduce the folks who will be taking your questions tonight. First up, Brooke Hines, bat ecologist. Thanks for being here. Mm -hmm. Kate Hayden. I saw a little bird you were holding there a minute ago. Avian ecologist. And Dana Baxley, herpetologist. Now, tonight's show is about critters that you don't necessarily hunt, so that's a bunch of them. So we've already got some questions, and don't forget to, uh, your Facebook questions. Kentucky Field, that's our Facebook page. Don't forget to like it and then ask your question. Now, let's go ahead and start off with Josh from Crittenden County. He found a dead finch by his feeder. What should he do? Okay, um, well this is this is pretty common this time of year. There's a, a disease that's um, spread at bird feeders. It's called mycoplasma or house finch eye disease. And it just affects the goldfinches and the house finches. And unfortunately, it's, it's pretty common in Kentucky. Um, if you find a dead finch or a, a sick finch at your feeder, you should take your feeder down. Um, dip it in bleach water and leave it down for about two weeks so that you avoid spreading that disease to other finches. So it is contagious to other finches? It is, yeah, and it's spread at the feeder, so it's good to leave it down for a bit until the disease passes. Scott is from Anderson County, and he has a barn owl nesting in his barn. And he wants to know, is that unusual? Well, it is unusual. Barn owls are a rare species in <coughs> Kentucky, um, but they, they certainly are around. It's one of the species that we track extensively, and so if you do have a barn owl in your barn, we, we sure would appreciate it if you called us and let us know. We have a research project on them, and um, we just like to uh, learn more about your owls. So if you have barn owls, please do give us a call. What does a barn owl look like for those who might be thinking, well, I know what a screech owl looks like, or a, what, yeah. what do they look like specifically? Uh, well, it was the owl that was on our intro. Um, they're called the, the monkey face owl. They have a round, flat face. You tend to see them a lot in movies. They're a very beautiful owl. They're uh, white in the face, uh, whitish breast, and, um, and they make a, a very uh, distinct screech. They do not hoot at all. They just screech. So. Can you tell us what that sound is? I, you know, it's funny. I thought you might ask that, um, but I'm not very good at doing owl impersonations. So. Dana, you want to? <laughs> I think I'm good. <laughs> Do you have a, a good impersonation? I don't. I normally would, but I've got allergies tonight. Oh, oh I owl allergies. <laughs> All right. Uh, Daryl is from Bourbon County. Are bats in Kentucky being affected by white nose syndrome? Now, that's in the news everywhere. Pete, first of all, let's talk about what is white nose syndrome. So, white nose syndrome <laughs> is a um, fungus that is affecting um, and is responsible for the deaths of probably at this point over 7 million hibernating bats oh, wow. in the eastern U.S. And so Kentucky is definitely um, uh, a state that has been affected by white nose syndrome. And um, we have started to see mortality in the state pretty significantly. 
So, uh, you know, if you've noticed a lot of more mosquitoes this year, uh, it's not just because it's been uh, a wet summer, but it's also because we have lost a lot of uh, bats and they are one of the primary predators of night flying insects. Are we figuring out what we can do for that, or is there anything we can do for that? There are. There is current research uh, ongoing and looking at biocontrols, um, and that's really kind of the last option that we have as, as humans to be able to, to help the bats. And so we're really hoping that these treatments can, uh, you know, advance in enough time to where we can save some of our hibernating species and help the states out west that are just now uh, being impacted. Uh, Tiffany from Kenton County wants to know what are a bat's favorite food? Oh, that's a good question. So in Kentucky and the eastern U.S., all bats are insectivorous, and so their favorite food is typically moths um, or aquatic insects and some bat species like beetles. So uh, they are 100% insectivorous. Jay is from Breathitt County. Can you age a rattlesnake by its rattles, or is that an old wives' tale? That is an old wives' tale. Aha. Uh, rattlesnakes put on a rattle every time they shed. So when they're very young and they're growing quickly, they might put on several rattles a year, two, three, four times during shedding. But as adults, they might shed once or twice a year. So you really can't age them by the rattles. Kenny Howe is from Ohio County. He was at Peabody Lake and he believes he saw a jellyfish. Would that be impossible and would it be uncommon? There are freshwater jellyfish throughout Kentucky, so no, not impossible and uh, not particularly uncommon. Just they don't a lot get huge. People, no. You know, uh -huh. I've seen them in Harrington Lake in different places, but I've seen them, you know, as big as a dime and I think yeah. up to the size maybe of a quarter and they look just like the, you know, the Bigger saltwater species. ones. Right. He's pretty observant. We do have them and yes, mm -hmm. that's the real deal. And I, th I don't think they're from here, but I think they got into our system somehow or another. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Uh, Bernice is from Franklin County. How many badgers are there in Kentucky, or are there badgers in Kentucky? Excellent question. Do you all ladies know anything about badgers in Kentucky? I have heard that there was that there was a sighting in the hmm. northern part, but uh, they're not I prevalent. I do know that. Yeah, I so. think it. I think it was one of those rumors that you hear this or that. Now we will have this question later. We're outside of their range, a little. Right. Detail. Yeah, we're way outside the range, mm -hmm. so that was probably a tale. And speaking of tails, people also say, are there armadillos here? That, on the other hand, there are confirmed sightings mm -hmm. of those, yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We do have armadillos, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's take a Facebook question. Richie Goff has a hummingbird stuck in his garage. Apparently it's just flying around. Mm -hmm. What should he do? Okay, well, uh, this, this happens somewhat commonly. Um, I'm not really sure why, but the best thing to do is to leave your garage door open, um, especially during the daytime. And they should, they get a little disoriented, um, you know, when they get stuck in a, a building, but usually they'll, they'll find their way out within a day or two. So I would just leave a, a window or a door open. And Brenda Crowner Burchett what, wants to know what kind of water snakes do we have here in Kentucky? We saw a snake in the water but could not identify it. A lot of people get really confused, and they any snake they see that's that's in Brown. the water is a water moccasin. Right. That's Would you please tell yeah, us about absolutely. that? Yeah, um, absolutely. We do have cottonmouths in Kentucky, but they don't occur in the eastern part of the state. The farthest eastern record is Ohio County, I believe. So most people think that any snake in the water is a cottonmouth when really the our northern water snake is very common, and um, it's in any water body throughout the state. So one good way to tell a cottonmouth from a, a regular water snake is that the cottonmouth will swim with their heads above water, where a, a regular water snake will just swim with its head right on the surface of the water. And cottonmouths tend to stay on their ground when you come upon them on the ground, whereas a, a water snake won't. So, yeah. Ray is from Covington. Is it true box turtles are on the endangered species list? That is not true. No, they are not endangered. Uh, Mark wants to know, are otters having any effect on the hellbender populations? That's an interesting question. I wouldn't think so because hellbenders spend most of their time under big flat boulders and creeks and bigger rivers. So I wouldn't think that otters would be able to, to get under those boulders, not that I know of. Okay, Sherman is from Henry County, and he wants to know what poisonous snakes can be found in the Henry and Trimble County areas. Henry and Trimble County areas. 
Would that be Land Between the Lakes area? It's just north. Just north of Louisville. That's, that's Louisville. Actually, Louisville. Okay, yeah. sorry. North, I'm north from north Arkansas, Covington. so I have a little trouble with the county questions. You're going to learn them. You're going to learn them. <laughs> you know, there are, the bluegrass region is very sparse when it comes to venomous snakes. Um, pygmy rattlesnakes, cotton mouse, copperheads, and timber rattlesnakes are four types of venomous snakes, and none of them are common in that area. So he's in a pretty safe part of the world if he doesn't like venomous snakes. Um, what can I do, says Arnold from Laurel County, <laughs> keep the woodpeckers from pecking holes in his apple trees? Mm, from pecking I holes. I hate it when they do that. It's usually a house or something like that, but... Um, well, you know, if he's, if, if the apple trees are close to his house, he could do things like um, spraying the hose and making loud noises to scare the birds away. Um, the birds are protected, so you cannot um, kill them, um, but you can certainly harass them away from a spot. And uh, sometimes people do things like tying up pie pans in the trees and just something that sort of rattles and, and scares the birds off. Catherine Burke wants to know what's a good app for identification. Or bird songs. Oh gosh, there's so many. Um, iBird is one of the, the very popular ones. Um, I guess the, the Audubon uh, app is good. I'm not a huge smartphone person, so I'm honestly <laughs> not an expert on, on that. Um, but there's, there's a lot of good ones out there. Robbie is from Hardin County. How do you get rid of a bat inside of your house? Well, that is very common this time of year um, when the juveniles are becoming volant and they're kind of like teenagers learning how to drive and they'll take a wrong turn into your house. So the easiest thing to do if it's just a single bat and uh, you don't have a colony living in your attic or on the eaves uh, or under your shutters is to kind of the same thing with the hummingbird, leave a door or window open, um, especially around dusk and nighttime and they should be able to find their way out. Um, there are safe ways to remove a bat um, if it's not leaving, and uh, I always refer people to Bat Conservation International's website on how to safely remove a bat without touching it. Um, but, uh, you know, just make sure that you don't have a colony living in your attic, because sometimes bats that live in, in, in attics can creep down into living quarters, and then that's a whole separate issue. Here's one. <clears throat> Who wants this one? Damn. Judy Heiss wants to know, why are your Kentucky field caps made in China? <laughs> well, I used to hand stitch them, <laughs> but it got to taking way too long, so we had to. Huh. So like I'm going to guess because of cost. I would say yeah. that's, that's my number one guess. Uh, let me see. All right, we've got a lot of cotton mouth questions. Hmm. Um, Alan Creech is he says not really a question, but wonder if you could mention. Uh, that there are no cotton mouths in central Kentucky. Can you yeah. can you say we, where they are specifically? I actually have a map because Aha. I was expecting some venomous like snake questions. So I don't know what the best way and to There are a whole lot of water and questions here. Here um, is your cotton mouth map for Kentucky. So as we reiterated before, pretty much any snake in the eastern part of the state is not a cotton mouth. So just, just those sparsely populated yep. areas west, mm -hmm. well, way in the western part Ohio of the state. Ohio County. Exactly. Now, you know, a lot of times uh, some of the bigger water snakes, they have a heavy body yeah, like they that. Look what is very the most, similar. What's the, what's the snake that looks the most like a western cottonmouth? Well, when they're young, I mean, I think just the, the northern water snake looks mm -hmm. a lot like the cottonmouth. And then in far western Kentucky, we have broad-banded water snakes and diamondback water snakes, and all of those can be confused for the cottonmouth. But never fear, that's that little map you showed just in the western part of the state, that's, yep. that's where they are. Absolutely. Um, Mike is from Danville. Why, do, why does one hummingbird seem to dominate at the feeder? Is there one, like? Well, hummingbirds are territorial, mm -hmm. as are most um, birds, and so, they're just, they're protecting their territory, they're protecting their food resources, and, um, and it can be pretty entertaining to watch that happen, but usually it's a, a territorial male that's trying to take over a feeder and keep all the other ones away. They, they get pretty... They get pretty feisty. They get pretty aggressive, don't they? All right, <clears throat> excuse me. Terry is from Muhlenberg County, wants to know about an eagle's flight. Do they have limitations on flight? What is their wingspan? and eating habits, so just touch okay. on a, 
Um, well, bald eagles have a wingspan of six to eight feet. Um, they're not a, a terribly fast flying bird. Um, they are, they're built for, for catching fish out of the water. And so um, their diet uh, is it's typically made up of uh, fish and waterfowl. They'll also take carrion or, or dead animals, especially during the winter. And they'll, they'll take anything else they can catch, but like I said, they're not the fastest bird of prey. And so um, they, they tend to take slower animals. Jerry Hyde on Facebook wants to know, are there any counties in central Kentucky that have no poisonous snakes? There are indeed in the inner bluegrass. Uh, and I actually have some range maps for co uh, copperheads as well as um, I believe I have. So around the bluegrass yeah. area, there's, there's not. I mean, in the bluegrass and timber rattlesnakes as well, especially timber rattlesnakes are vacant from pretty much the inner and outer bluegrass. And copperheads, are statewide, however, there are counties in the inner bluegrass that have no records. And I'll show you this map real quick, and then maybe we'll all be straight on our venomous snake range facts. Wow. <clears throat> you know, the, the thing I found interesting about a copperhead a couple years ago, is they're one of the most common yeah. snakes in the state. They in the are. top five? Am yep, I, am I correct? Absolutely. They can be very abundant where they're found. Harlan is from LaRue County. He's got a red a bird, a red male with a pale green female in the front yard in a nest. They're not cardinals. What might they be? Well, it sounds like they might be um, summer tanagers. Um, <coughs> summer tanagers, the males are all red. The, their wings are red. Everything on them is red. And they have a big um, stout bill, a little bit longer than a cardinal's. And the females are kind of a yellowish green. Uh, their song is kind of like a robin, and, and they like forested areas, so maybe that's it if he has kind of a forested Anthony yard. is from Salt Lake. Do black snakes keep copperheads away? That is up for debate. I think he's probably talking about king snakes, not black racers, and king snakes are called king snakes because they are immune to the venom of other venomous snakes, certain species. So a lot of herpetologists do think that you won't necessarily find copperheads when you have king snakes present. So that's... It's an interesting question. Don is from Shelby County. Uh, his purple martins did not show up this year. Do you have any idea why? Is that something that happens? That can be a tough um, question to, to answer. Um, it may take them a few years to attract purple martins again. Um, they tend to come back to the same areas every year. It could be that um, you know maybe some of them didn't survive the winter or there was a new colony or a new um, little purple Mount martin housing complex put up somewhere nearby that attracted them. It's, it's tough to say. <laughs> subdivision. Yeah, it's, it's not always easy to explain. <laughs> Richard from Jefferson County, and, and th this is a common question tonight, how do you get owls? People, is there any kind of habitat you could do to, to bring owls yeah. into your place? Well, um, most owls eat uh, rodents and, and rabbits, and so um, by letting some habitat grow up, maybe not mowing an area, it would be a good way to bring in some rodents um, for owl food. And then uh, leaving snags standing is very um, important for owls wherever it's safe to do so. Leaving hollow trees be, uh, that's where a lot of owls will nest. Um, some owls you can put up boxes for like barn owls or screech owls. Um, so you may be able to install a nest box. And, and other than that, it's just um, letting some rough habitat grow up for the, for the rodents and other critters. Glenn is from Russell County. He's seeing lizards hanging out and crawling around with a blue tail. Yes. What might that be? Are they bad or good? Oh, I think they're, they're absolutely good. They're eating insects probably around his porch or something. We have three lizards that at times in their life when they're younger have blue tails. The um, eastern, uh, the, um, I'm sorry, the broadhead skink, the uh, southeastern five-line skink, and the five-line skink. Um, something we might want to mention, if for some reason we don't get to your question tonight or you're, you're still wondering about some things, uh, you can call the department, 1-800-858-1549, or check out our website at fw.ky.gov. Or you can snail mail us the old-fashioned way. What's our address? Number one game farm. Sportsman's oh, Lane. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Number one sportsman's Lane. I do that all the time. I know. Over the I telephone. Like that. So if you if you we don't get, get your question, oh yeah, uh, if you don't get your question answered tonight, and again, I, 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 it's kind of a joke because I say call, everybody call the information center on Monday, but we have the <laughs> best information people in the world. They will find. They will help you with any question that you've got.
All right, Bobby Smith is from Hart County. Uh, he has barn swallows getting in his barn and how can I say this? Making a mess on his equipment. Mm -hmm. What should he do to, <laughs> to encourage them to go mess elsewhere? Okay. Uh, uh, barn swallows are a good thing to have around. You know, they do eat a lot of insects, but I do understand they can be messy. And so um, I guess the best thing to do would be um, they look for kind of a certain structure if you can't, you know, kind of change the structure of the barn to make it less appealing. Um, you can, before they lay eggs in their nest, you can take the nest down. Uh, migratory bird nests are protected when they um, contain eggs or chicks. Uh, when they're just starting on a nest, if you really need to deter a bird, you can take the nest down. Um, but uh, that's about all you can do. Tarping. They are pretty persistent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put tarps on things. Uh, sure. I'm a Facebook yeah, question. Gary Bryan <coughs> wants to know, why do male cardinals continually fly into his window? But it's the same thing to mine. Yeah. Well, um, cardinals are not the smartest songbird out there. <laughs> how, do you, um, how do you rate the intelligence of a songbird? <laughs> the, the birds that have to migrate tend to be a little bit more intelligent. They have to remember how to get to and from their wintering grounds. Cardinals don't migrate, so they don't have to have quite as much going on up there. Really? You know? I did not and, did you know that? Uh, <laughs> And so they see their reflection in, in the window and they think it's another territorial male and they're trying to chase them off. And so you can do things to make your windows less reflective, like put some of those little decorator decals on them or Stop just let them, them get dirty. <laughs> That's what I do. That's what I yeah. do. <laughs> or put a, put a red, uh, red uh, cardinal looking thing out there and they can attack that instead of your window. That would just be mean, though, wouldn't it? Oh, that would be a little cruel. Yeah. You know what? I this, just let the windows get it's, dirty. It's, yeah. uh, it's like 20 after 8. It's amazing that we've gone through that many questions this quick. But part of this show that's different about the other shows is we always bring animals in. And I know we have a few over there. We've been having a lot of owl questions. So in just a second, we're going to see an owl. Uh, but meanwhile, let's get back to the questions. There's a bunch of snake questions All right. tonight. We'll see. Jerry's from McCracken County. Mm -hmm. And he wants to know, what is the average size of a copperhead? Average size of a copperhead? I can't tell you exactly, but they're not. They're heavy-bodied snakes, but they're not incredibly long snakes. I mean, I would say probably no larger than 14 inches is probably about average length. Albert is from Fayette County and he wants to know, do goldfinches migrate? Goldfinches do migrate. Um, we get a lot of them that come down uh, from up north, you know, uh, starting pretty soon here. So they can more than likely solve a Rubik's Cube better than a cardinal? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, Mike was fishing on Taylorsville Lake and thought he saw a pair of golden eagles. Is that possible in Kentucky? It is possible to see a golden eagle in Kentucky, um, but they are far less common than the bald eagle. Um, what he probably saw in Taylorsville Lake was the two young bald eagles that came out of the nest there this year, and they look an awful lot like golden eagles. Um, you can, you can tell the difference if you're looking at them through binoculars by looking for the golden nape. The young bald eagles don't have that. Um, a lot of golden eagles have very organized white patches under their wings. Um, young bald eagles will just have mottled white all over them. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the background, I see our first uh, guest tonight. Guest of honor. Guest of honor. <laughs> Who's coming on stage right now. <laughs> He's nervous. In just a second. He's staged. Right. All right. Once he gets standing back up straight, we'll, we'll get him on. But in the meanwhile, Charlotte is from Macquarie County. Where have all the whippoorwills gone? And I know they're not all gone because I heard some this turkey season. Yeah, uh, there certainly does seem to be a decline. That's a question I get a lot. Um, we don't know the answer. We're trying to start some research on it. Uh, whippoorwills uh, nest on the ground, and, and we wonder if maybe ground nesting predators and increase in coyotes and feral cats mm -hmm. may be a problem for them. Um, but uh, we're, we're hoping to have some answers on that soon. Look who we got here. Look, oh, look who, who we have here. <laughs> oh, that's just right. <laughs> Heard you all been getting questions about owls. Yeah, absolutely. Let's, so, let's... always a great opportunity to bring some non-game non critters along. So, what I have here is a very, very common owl that we have all throughout the state. You can find this owl in, in pretty much every county. And what this is, is a great horned owl. And uh, called a horned owl for fairly obvious reasons. Those are just ear tufts. Those are not actually his ears. A lot of people think that. Those are just feathers, but uh, they sort of look like horns. And called a great horned owl because of the size. And this is actually 
the largest of the four owl species that we have in Kentucky year-round. Now, they look huge, but what does that owl probably weigh? He actually weighs about three pounds. Three pounds. A lot less than people would think, but if you're a bird that flies, you need to be lightweight at all times. And to, to help them do that, they have a lot of hollow bones, and uh, they're covered in feathers, and feathers don't weigh very much. And uh, those of us who ever parked our vehicle underneath a, uh, a tree that had birds in it know that they have very efficient digestive systems. <laughs> so... They poop a lot because poop is heavy. <laughs> and most people have, during their life in school have probably uh, dissected an owl pellet. The materials that their bodies can't use, in the case of an owl, that's going to be hair, teeth, and bones. They cough it up uh, out the hole that it came in. Wow. That is extraordinary. <laughs> now, what, what's, the, what's some of their favorite meals? You know, they're what we call an apex predator, which means they're at the very, very top of the food chain. Uh, they don't have many natural predators to worry about themselves, and they eat a lot of different things, ranging from small rodents like mice and rats and chipmunks up to much larger things. Uh, they're one of the only predators we know of that will routinely kill and eat skunks, as a matter of fact. Now, they can't carry them away. We often get asked, you know, I've got a small dog or I've got a cat. Could it carry it away? Uh, the, the rule of thumb with raptors is that they can carry away about half their body weight. Well, we established that he weighs about three pounds, so he could only carry away something that weighs about a pound and a half. But that doesn't mean that they couldn't kill it and sit on the ground with it and eat it. Man, oh man, can you imagine eating a skunk? Yeah. I mean, you know, after it's... This is a great illustration, I'm glad you brought that up, because this is a great illustration of the fact that except for vultures, birds have a really, really bad sense of smell. And so if he were out in the wild and he caught a skunk and it sprayed him, he really wouldn't care because he couldn't smell it anyway. Wow, very interesting. Well, thank you so much for that. You got some more critters for later, right? Yeah, we got right, some more. Well, thank you so you much. Bet. Let's get back to a few questions. Um, Bill is from Hart County. Are cottonmouth snakes in the Green River? I believe we looked at your map. They're, they're not. Well, Didn't at least in Hart County. No. Uh, Velvin is from Macquarie County. Is it, illegal, is it illegal to kill timber rattlesnakes on your property? It is not technically illegal to kill timber, timber rattlesnakes on your property. However, we strongly discourage that. Um, most people that are bit by snakes, it's while they're trying to kill them or handling them intentionally. Um, you're allowed to legally possess five of, of any snake species in Kentucky except the copper belly water snake. There's a lot of folks calling, uh, talking about uh, the black vultures being a pest. Uh, Wesley's from Shelby County. Um, they're getting in the garbage, they're hanging out around calves. What can, what can they do to, to try to push them out of the area? Well, it depends on what the vultures are doing. Um, vultures in the wintertime will, will gather in large numbers in roosting areas, and, and they're just kind of a safety in numbers type bird. A lot of times these areas are, are warmer areas, like downtown areas near rivers or perhaps power plants. And um, to deter roosting vultures, uh, usually you have to um, do what we call a pyrotechnics regime where you have to <laughs> shoot off some light with fireworks <laughs> for seven to ten nights in a row, make them uncomfortable, make them understand that that's not the best place for them to sleep at night. Excuse to have some bottle rockets. My yeah, yeah. Would of course love you may that. have to get permission from the local community before you make all <laughs> that racket. Um, you know, if they're getting in your trash, loud noises, spraying with the hose, things like that. They are a protected birds, so you, you cannot kill them without a permit. Um, but if they are doing damage to your livestock, if they are um, killing calves, which rarely does happen, and you have um, documents, if you have photographs of that, then you can get a permit to reduce your vulture population. But you have to go through the appropriate federal um, venue to do that. All right. Amelia is from Hart County. How can she attract bats? Smart lady, she wants bats. Well, that is a good question. So a lot of the bats that uh, we have in Kentucky, um, at some point in their life, most of them will uh, roost in trees. So it would help if you're in a forested or semi-forested area. Um, bat houses are always a good thing to put up, and we have plans for bat houses online, um, as well as you can buy bat houses. Um, Bat houses will only work if they are installed properly, so there are guidelines on how to install bat houses online depending on the structure that you want, but a good rule of thumb is they need to be 15 feet or more off the ground. Uh, they need to have really good solar exposure, uh, full sun, six to 10 mm -hmm. hours a day. Um, that helps keep them warm for uh, maternity colonies to form. So if you follow those two things and you've got some trees nearby, uh, there's a, a decent chance you can get some bats. 
Tiffany Case Reed wants to know what species of bat are most prevalent in northern Kentucky. Oh, okay. So in in northern Kentucky, the species most prevalent would probably be the eastern red bat. Um, and uh, they're a migratory species, um, so they will migrate south in the winter. Um, but we are starting to figure out uh, that they like to roost in leaf litter uh, during the winter months as well. So um, we're finding out more and more things about, about our migratory species. Steve's from Madison County. <coughs> you have to excuse me now. I've got some kind of allergy thing going. Whippoorwills, uh, here's them in the spring, but not in the summer. Do they migrate? What, what's their, where do they go? Or is that just their... Yeah, they do migrate. Um, they go down to probably Mexico and south um, for the winter, and so he may be hearing them just migrating through in the spring, and then they maybe go on somewhere else to nest. Uh, John is from Jefferson County. Other than hummingbirds, what other birds drink nectar? Well, occasionally at your hummingbird feeder, you might find a downy woodpecker um, or even an uh, orchard or a uh, Baltimore oriole. Um, and that's, that's probably about it for our mm. nectar drinkers that I can think of. Ronald is from Aquaria County. When do copperheads and rattlesnakes mate? What is their mating season? Uh, they mate in the spring or early summer. And Missy from Taylor County, how cold does it have to be before snakes hibernate? That's a good question. It depends on the snake. Um, I'm not really sure what the temperature is, but generally snakes aren't that active when it's much cooler than mid 40s, sometimes low, like low 50s. Um, Kitty is from Carter County. Thought she saw a cormorant today. Is that possible in Kentucky? Yeah, it's very possible, especially in, in western Kentucky. We do get a lot of them. <coughs> and this time of year in late summer, sometimes you'll see some solitary birds in kind of strange places. Jewel uh, from Tennessee wants to know, what are crows good for other than waking her up in the morning? <laughs> oh. Well, they're, they're good for, um, you know, scavenging, cleaning up roadkill, things like that. Uh, I, it's, that's kind of a funny question. <laughs> uh, Ron Johnson is from Shelby County. Do rattlesnakes shed their skin? Yes, they absolutely do. And Dave from Jes uh, Jefferson County. Are there northern ringneck snakes in northern Kentucky? Yes, there are. Um, we've gotten so many snake questions. Yeah. Maybe we should bring a snake in. Oh, we, we brought a snake in. Cue the snake. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I will say got? this, uh, <clears throat> what, what I have here is a corn snake, compliments of the Salado Wildlife Education Center, great facility in Frankfort, Kentucky. And they only eat cream corn, right? No, no. <laughs> they also eat hominy. <laughs> hominy, they only eat hominy. <laughs> Contrary to the corn snake's name, it does not eat corn. It eats uh, rodents, mice, that type of thing. Um, they call it a corn snake. Well, there are two hypotheses about why they call it a corn snake. The first is that its belly looks a little bit like Indian corn. Mm -hmm. And the second is that back in the day, it was not uncommon to find corn snakes around corn cribs eating small mammals and things uh -huh. like that. And the corn snake has a really special distribution in Kentucky. It's only found in two populations that are separated by 150 miles or so. So it's down in Hart and Edmondson counties and then over in eastern Kentucky near the Red River Gorge. So we're very interested in any corn snake sightings that you all have out there. And unfortunately, some people mistake it for a copperhead mm -hmm. and the they're coloration. often killed because people think they're copperheads. Let's talk real quick about an easy way to tell um, a poisonous snake from a non-poisonous snake, for, you know, from a safe distance. Yeah. What, what are some quick things you can do? I mean, the easiest thing you can do is be familiar with the snakes that are native to your area. There mm -hmm. are only four venomous snakes in Kentucky, and one of them is the pygmy, pygmy rattlesnake, which is only in far western Kentucky. Um, but in general, people often talk about head shape being more diamond shaped for venomous snakes, but you probably don't want to get close enough to look at the head or the pupils. So if you see a snake and you're concerned it might be venomous, the best thing to do is just to leave it alone. Right. Keep a safe distance. They have their place. They do have their place. What, what else have you got over there in, in that other box? We have a box turtle, if you want me to bring well, that out. Let's look at that while we're at it. Now, okay. they are not endangered. No, box turtles are not endangered. That is correct. We get that question a lot. <laughs> Can you have these? For a pet. Yeah, you can, um, in Kentucky, you can keep a box turtle as a pet. You can't have more than five. That's our, our state rule. 
Uh, most people have seen box turtles, uh, usually in May and June on rainy days or after a big rain, a box, box turtles will be out on the roads. And one of the questions I get a lot is, you know, I saw a box turtle on the road, so I moved it to some really good habitat a few miles down the road. And I would like to share with the public that that's probably the worst thing you can do for a box turtle. I mean, these, these turtles live to be 40, 50, 60 years old, and generally they live within a couple acre area. So in that couple of acres, they know where to hibernate, they know where to get food, they know where the water is, and when you move them, they have an incredible homing instinct where they just wanna get back to their, their own home range. So usually they'll just keep trucking and, and end up getting killed on a road. So, so if you see a turtle on a road, um, definitely if it's safe to stop, and you can move it in the directions it's going, that's the best thing to do. Get him off the road. Yeah, get him off the <laughs> or road. Or avoid him at mm -hmm. all costs. Mm -hmm. um, now, this we got this question earlier, but we're getting a lot. Patricia Powell from Jefferson County, how do you get bats out of the attic? So bats in the attic is uh, unfortunately a very common thing that people um, find in the summertime. And it's usually one of two species. It's either big brown bats or little brown bats. And with the little brown bats being impacted by white nose syndrome, um, it's mostly big brown bats uh, these days. So uh, a good thing to remember is bats can get into um, an area. They can go through a quarter of an inch hole or, or bigger. It's basically the size of their skull. So once they're in and once they establish a residence, it's hard to get them out. And so we permit nuisance wildlife control operators, and there are some uh, in the state and surrounding uh, areas that uh, specialize in bat removal. So I would reference our website, fw.ky.gov. Um, and if you have bats in your home or you find bats or dead, dead or dying bats in your yard or on your property, or you have bats in your barn, we also have a report of bat um, webpage on our website, and I encourage people to use that. Uh, we've been having a little bit of technical difficulties with it uh, recently with my email, but I think it's up and running. So if you haven't, uh, if I haven't responded, uh, I apologize. And uh, but we try to answer all uh, reports. So a report about on our website. Margaret from Grayson, ringneck turtle doves. She's seeing some unusual birds in her house. Is this possible? Uh, yeah, we do have uh, we have Eurasian collared doves that. That's that's the actual name. Uh, yeah, and I think that's what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. And they um, they occur kind of around the Bowling Green area, probably up towards her, that kind of south central part of the state. And they're not native to the state. They were um, introduced. I, I don't really know the story behind that, but they kind of stay in that part of the state. They're a little bit bigger than a morning dove. And uh, it's just kind of a, a strange thing. Uh, Facebook question, Eugene Beasley says, awesome show, better than most on the Outdoor Channel, just saying. I don't have a problem with that. You got any problem with that? I have no problem <laughs> with that. Thank you, Eugene. Uh, let's see. I uh, saw one on here. Okay, Becky and Dwight Brown. Uh, Dwight wants to know, are there many crane roosts in Kentucky? One in Breckenridge County. It's been over there for 20 year, uh, 24 years. I suppose he's talking about probably blue heron. Yeah, I think you must be talking about a great blue heron rookery, and we do have quite a few of those in, in Kentucky now, um, ranging anywhere from a, a rookery is a, a group of great blue heron nests, and, um, and they do that for uh, safety in numbers type thing. And we have rookeries ranging from one nest to um, thousands of nests. There's one wow. in Henderson County that's just huge and really impressive. Um, but they, we, we continually find more of them along rivers and, and lakes. Nathan's from Henderson. Uh, what about scarlet snakes in Kentucky? Does it oh, happen? Scarlet snakes are probably one of the most rare snakes we have in terms of people seeing them, reporting observations, and finding them. But we do have them in Kentucky. What's their range and habitat? What, what do you want to know? You know, it's, it's not well known in Kentucky. In the Gulf Coast Plain, deeper south, they like sandy soils. Um, they specialize on skink eggs down there, but they've never been studied here in Kentucky. Derek Becker wants to know, if I build a bad house to put it in the yard, will they come? Will it help with the bugs? Or will it run off the birds that visit the feeders daily? So the, having a bat house that's populated with bats will not run off the birds. Um, and I never discourage someone from putting a bat house up, but um, as a rule of thumb, I'll, I'll reiterate the 15 foot or, or greater height off the ground and six to 10 hours of full sun solar exposure. 
um, and uh, it helps if you have some trees, but uh, don't put your bat house on a tree. It's better to put them on the side of a, of a barn or a darker structure. Tom King is from Maria. What's the best location to find a hummingbird nest? Well, a hummingbird's nest in um, kind of the outer, more spindly branches of um, hardwood trees, and their nests are really hard to find because they're so small. Um, the best way to find them, you know, I think they use all different species of hardwoods, but the best way to find them would be uh, just to watch the hummingbirds going to and from their nest in spring. If you see one carrying nesting material, you might be able to catch it going back to its nest. Uh, Debbie from Metcalf County wants to know if a copperhead has a smell. Snakes, uh, snakes in general don't have a nose like you or I do. They have an. I'm actually saying, do, I should say, do they? Oh, do have, they have a they smell? Have a lot of people say it smells smell. like cucumbers or. Have you ever heard that? Also? I have heard that. A and lot you've of been snakes, around them. Yeah, a lot of snakes do have a distinctive smell, but I've I've never noticed with copperheads in particular. Right. Okay. Now, if you see me throwing a question away, it's not because I don't like you. It's because that question has been asked maybe five or six times already. So I am not throwing anything away on purpose. Water snake species, do they lay eggs or have live babies? That's uh, Wayne from Barron County. I believe water snakes lay eggs. I know our venomous snakes give live birth. And Don is from Henry County. Can eagles swim? Eagles can swim. Uh, they don't I prefer to. I saw a video of that to. today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't choose to, but occasionally they'll end up in the water going after a big fish. And mm -hmm. if that happens, you'll see them paddle to shore and usually sit on the shore drying out before they fly I off. saw one in Alaska after some, it looked like a snapper, a red snapper had died, and it was too much for it to carry, so it ended up swimming over the bank and eating it. Yeah. Okay, Jimmy from Warren County used to see horsehair snake. Hmm. That sounds like maybe a, a slang name. Horsehair snake. Swim on top of the water. Small, thin mm -hmm. snake. I'm not really sure. Hmm. Horsehair Maybe. snake. I've never heard yeah. that one. You know, a lot of locations around the state have different, you know, names, pet names they have for everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jennifer from Walton, Kentucky. Do box turtles carry salmonella? They can. They can carry salmonella. So if you keep one as a pet, it's always a good idea to wash your hands thoroughly after handling them. Ray's from Carter County. Is there a snake repellent? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Although, if you want to keep them out from your yard or house, if you mow your grass really short and keep debris out of your yard, they generally tend to avoid your house. Uh, Steve's from Clark County. What can you do to stop the bees from coming to the hummingbird feeder? Well, they make these hummingbird feeders with um, bee guards on them, which is just a little piece of mesh that kind of fits over the place where the hummingbirds drink out of, and that tends to make it inaccessible to the bees. Also, just whatever you can do to adapt the feeder to keep it from dripping. Usually it's a tight seal issue. Larry is from Johnson County. Um, bird flu, is that a problem in Kentucky? It has been uh, confirmed in Kentucky. Uh, we had a, a couple of cases in, in waterfowl earlier this year. Um, last I heard, we don't have any cases in, in domestic uh, birds just yet, but uh, we encourage folks to uh, call us if they find suspicious bird mortalities, um, lots of birds uh, dead in one place. Uh, they can certainly report that to us and, and we can see if we need to test for bird flu. Coles from uh, LaRue County, uh, and let's touch on this again. He may not have watched earlier, but what do native bats eat? What are, what's their main source of chow? So uh, <clears throat> native bats in, in Kentucky and all of Eastern US will, uh, they're all insectivorous. So they, all, they eat various species of insects, moths, aquatic insects, and some species will eat beetles. Laura's from Pulaski County, what do box turtles eat? Box turtles are omnivores. They'll eat worms or slugs. Um, they'll also eat fruit, berries. One interesting uh, fact is that they'll eat mushrooms, even poisonous mushrooms for people. And uh, there have been cases where people eating box turtles have gotten poisoned from Ooh. them, ha holding the residue of the toxins in their bodies. So they'll eat just about anything. Tony's from McCracken County. Some things we just don't know. <laughs> Why do earthworms crawl up on the sidewalks and die? Anybody? <laughs> So maybe the they had a bad day. Eat them. Ah, maybe, <laughs> maybe they just had a really bad day. They do that for the dumber birds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, 
Bobby wants to know, do you have to boil sugar water for the hummingbirds? No, you don't. You just heat the water to get um, the sugar to dissolve in it and uh, doesn't need to be boiled. Mike's from Jefferson County. We have a red-tailed hawk in our area, but don't see it every day. How, how big is their range? They probably have a range anywhere from 40 to uh, 100 or more acres, and so they're, they're probably covering a very large area. Leo is from Breckenridge County. Do, should we worry about the weed killer sprayed along the roads? Does that affect frogs, amphibians, or other critters? No, that's a really good question. If Whenever possible, it's always best to use, you know, natural methods for weed control and that type of thing. But um, generally, we try to abide by best management practices where hopefully the spraying doesn't occur really close to ponds and wetlands. A raise from Covington, hognose snakes. Are they endangered or are they doing okay? No, hognose snakes are doing really well and they're one of the coolest snakes we have in Kentucky. They blow up and impersonate a cobra and, and then if you touch them, they'll play dead and regurgitate the toad that they just ate. So It's a wonder there's any of them that survive because, of, because of the way they, you know, they, they look like they're going to get you. Right. <laughs> and a lot of the reaction to that when they swell up and they, you know, it's like, oops, off with his head. Mm -hmm. But they're neat, they neat are. animals. What's the, what's the main thing they eat? They, they eat toads mainly. They have in their rear fangs that kind of pop the toad because the toad will swell up once the, it gets eaten. But it's a bad strategy when you're crossing a road and a truck passes you and then you play dead. It's not very good. <laughs> uh, Phillips from Corbin. Uh, are there northern loons? Are there loons in Kentucky? Laura Lake. There are a um, there, there are, yeah. Um, statewide, I think. You know, is that something that's happened in the last 20 or 30 years, or, or is mm. that always, have they always been here, or do we know? I'm not, I'm not terribly sure. Waterfowl's not my expertise, but. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bob's from Montgomery County, uh, lives east of Mount Sterling. He's a hawk, smaller than a red tail, but he has white on his tail. What kind is that? Or can you, well, is that enough it, of a description that, yeah, it could be maybe a, a Cooper's hawk. They have a, a gray and white banded tail. Um, they're a little bit smaller than a, a red-tailed hawk, and um, they're a faster flyer. Mark from Grant County wants to know what brand of boots I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They were on sale. I'm not really sure. <laughs> You know boots. what? I picked that up, and I just thought I would read it. <laughs> you just had the camera on your boots. I didn't know the camera bit. was on my boots. It's you know really what? On your boots. Whatever they were, they were on sale, and I got a really good deal on them. <laughs> All right. Uh, Crystal is from Mercer County. She and her husband uh, were fishing at Harrington. They saw a bird with a white stomach and about a five-foot wingspan that dove into the water and caught a large fish. What might that be? Well, um, we don't have them nesting there, but maybe it was migrating. Uh, it sounds like it could have been an osprey. Um, the wingspan's about right for it, and that's a, a brown and, and white bird. Looks a lot like an eagle, but a little bit smaller. While we're talking about uh, those type of birds, Lee uh, uh, Becker Strom in Kenton County, why do red-tailed hawks screech while flying and perching? We had one that's been doing this all summer long. We had one the other day on Elkhorn. Just making an awful racket. Yeah. There's a few reasons that they do it. Um, the typical screech that you hear played on television, usually with a bald eagle or, or some other bird flying with it, is a territorial screech. They're announcing, this is my territory, other red-tailed hawks, keep out. Um, but also, this time of year, you hear a lot of screeching um, from young ones that are communicating with their parents. And uh, basically, they're just begging for food, um, trying to get a free meal. Sounds like a two-and-a-half-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Brown is from Ohio. And uh, Ohio County, excuse me. Uh, blue racers in Ohio County, is that possible? Uh, a lot of people call black racers blue racers. Or snakes often turn blue right before they shed their skin. Kelvin is from Ohio, or Ohio County, it doesn't say. <laughs> either or. Bats are behind the window shutters. How do I remove them, and does he really need to? Um, well, I mean, if they are uh, making a mess, and, and most people don't want wild animals living in and or on their homes, so the best way to remove them is to wait till they uh, leave at dusk, make sure they're all gone, and you can get some expanding foam 
and spray back there. Uh, but you want to make sure they're all gone. The young uh, are, have left as well. So we don't typically recommend messing with bats where they're roosting until uh, around September. The way we can make sure it's not maternity season. Okay. Dan's from Lawrence County Copperhead Snakes. What to do to get rid of them? Apparently he's got a lot of them. So. Oh, well, as I mentioned earlier, if it's around his house, keeping his grass mowed, keeping debris out of the way, um, in, in general, that's the best way to keep them away from your home. Also, if your home is raised and there's space between the bottom floor and the ground, underpinning your home is a really good idea to keep snakes away from it. Terry Hoffman from Callaway County. Falcon around the house and property um, wants to keep it around the house. Is there anything that you can do particularly to keep birds mm. of prey around your house? Well, um, I guess like we said earlier, if it, it, opposite of the snakes, if you want to let your habitat grow up <laughs> a little bit um, to, to let some rodents exist, uh, you know, that's, uh, that would be good for food for most birds of prey. Uh, if it's a small falcon called a kestrel, you can put up a uh, nest box for it. Pam is from uh, Madison County. Is there a possibility for corn snakes to be in eastern Madison County? And if not, what's another orange colored snake? Hmm, eastern Madison County. Uh, other orange snakes, the copperheads get confused with corn snakes quite a bit, so that could be what she's seeing. And they're much more common than corn snakes as well. By the way, we want to thank the Becoming an Outdoor Woman program for answering phones tonight. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of folks in there who help us out. We really appreciate that. It's a great program. It is a great yep. program. And I'm going to be doing some cooking for them very shortly. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. And again, the number to call, 1-800-944-4664. Travis is from Jefferson County and wants to know what happened to the Blue Jays. He's seeing less and less Blue Jays. Hmm. Uh, well, Blue Jays can, can be affected by uh, West Nile virus, which we do have in the state. And so it, it could be that... Uh, Maybe some of that is going on. Tough to say. Mm. Janet is from Bullitt County. How to attract purple martins to a purple martin house. I suppose they already have one. I said, I have one set up, but nobody will stay. Yeah, that's tough. You can't really do anything but just build them a nice place and really hope that they come. They want to be close to water. Um, but uh, other than that, it can take several years to attract a colony. So build a pond. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Patricia's from Lyon County, land between lakes there, had pileated woodpeckers, but have not seen any since the 2009 ice storm. Mm -hmm. Any idea why? Well, I wonder if some of her dead trees fell down. Um, they need, a, you know, a, a dead tree with a hollow in it, and so it could be that their nesting cavity was lost. And um, it, Occasionally they will use nest boxes, but otherwise, you know, just keeping your dead trees around is the best thing you can do for them. Steve from Macquarie County, what type of rattlesnakes are in eastern Kentucky? Just the, the timber rattlesnakes. Um, a call from around the Round County area. Uh, they like to play in the creeks in Round County. Any reason to believe there might be a poisonous snake in the creeks? Not a cottonmouth, but um, copperheads could be adjacent to the creek bank. I mean, there is a chance you could run into a copperhead in and around those creeks. Okay, let's do another Facebook question and uh, we got that one Joe Cruz absent of any nearby caves where were the bats I'm seeing in the evening in our yard in Paducah likely to be living when not out flying love the show even though direct TV dropped it tonight <gasps> what? Direct TV, we're gonna have to have a talk with that. I know. all right where where are they hanging out the bats so the bats they are, don't see them. yeah so the bats are most likely hanging out in trees um, and most of the bats that you find in, in Kentucky um, roost in trees during the summer we have a few bats that uh, we call cave obligates a few species one being the Virginia biggard bat one being the gray bat that are cave obligates which means they spend most of their life uh, year round in caves but all the other species, 13 or 14 uh, of them, uh, would roost in trees or barns. Um, again, if you see any of those, report a bat on our website. Uh, Mitch Whitaker wants to know, how are the eagles that have the trackers on them, how is that program doing? Yeah, that's funny. I know Mitch. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, <laughs> thanks for asking. Uh, they're doing good. And if you'd like to follow them, uh, we have a blog. Uh, you can find it off our, our website, or if you just Google Kentucky Eagle Tracking, 
Um, we've got birds in Wisconsin right now and, and uh, birds going all over the place that can be very interesting to follow. Cool. Nancy Sullivan wants to know how can you tell how old a box turtle is? Is there any... You can count the rings on their scoots, the big scales on their shell. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's pretty tough to do when they get really old, but you can do it. Let me see, Megan wants to know, will, uh, will snakes eat bugs in your garden? Absolutely. Any type of snakes, what type the of? Garter snakes are usually the snakes that are in and around your garden and they are excellent at eating slugs and insects that might also eat your, your produce plants. I wouldn't think this is possible, but I'm hearing music. I know. Are y'all oh playing guitar on your back or something with your feet? <laughs> oh, you know what that means? That means the show is over. Can you believe that? That was an hour. Wow. Bad. Thank you so much for calling in tonight and asking really good questions. One of the most common questions right here, Lucille's from Kenton County, snakes in your house. What are you going to do at that point? Well, How are you um, going to get it? <laughs> if you're not comfortable around snakes or don't know what type of snake it is, even though it's probably a rat snake or a racer or something harmless, um, call a nuisance wildlife control operator and they'll help you out. 1-800-858-1549. We have listings. Thank you so much, each one, for being here tonight. You're welcome. You could have been doing something else on Saturday night. Could have been. Like making Kentucky Hill hats. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. You think we can sneak one more in? Flying squirrel in the birdhouse. What do I feed him? Nothing. <laughs> 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 let let him get out. his own food, right? <laughs> yeah, don't touch a flying squirrel. <laughs> I saw a man get eaten up by a flying squirrel yeah. on this stage one time. They're oh super cute, but very vicious. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah.